Welcome to ODOT's video on how to construct and inspect ADA compliant curb ramps. This video shows engineers, inspectors, and contractors how to consistently measure newly constructed curb ramps. Each curb ramp has an asset ID number. This number is used to create a process or workflow to capture information in the new collector app. That information includes data on construction, inspection, and waivers. The design vehicle used for curb ramps is the wheelchair. Accessibility standards focus on making sure wheelchairs can get to and through the curb ramp as easily and smoothly as possible. The algebraic difference between the ramp slope and the gutter counter slope cannot exceed 11%, or else a 24 inch level strip must be provided between the two slopes. To make sure wheelchairs can get through, all transition points must be flush. Be sure to check the bottom of the curb ramp and all gutter, asphalt, and concrete joints. If any of these places are not flush, the ramp is no longer compliant. All brakes and joints need to be made flush. Make sure the detectable warnings span the full width of the curb ramp. They should be at least two feet deep in the direction of the running slope. ODOT does allow a two inch width tolerance at the sides of the detectable warnings. Detectable warnings should be aligned with the pedestrian access route. They should contrast in color with the curb ramp Always calibrate your level before measuring any slopes. The most commonly used levels are Smart Tool and Stabila. Before you measure, refer to the ODOT standard construction drawing BP 7.1 to identify which type of curb ramp you are evaluating. For all types of curb ramp, you will need to measure running slope, cross slope, and counter slope. To measure the running slope, place the level in the center of the curb ramp, parallel to the direction of the ramp. Remember that all slope measurements should be reported to the tenths place. For perpendicular, combined, and parallel curb ramps, you need to measure the running slope of the landing. To do so, place the level in the center of the landing and parallel to the direction of travel. To measure the cross slope, place the level in the center of the curb ramp, perpendicular to the running slope. Again, record the measurement to the tenths place. To measure the cross slope of the turning space, place the level in the center of the turning space. The level should be parallel to the street and perpendicular to the direction of travel. To measure the counter slope, place the level at the flow line pointing toward the crown of the street and parallel to the running slope. Make sure the level is centered on the curb ramp and record the counter slope. You may need a shorter level so you can stay within the curb and the gutter area. To measure the width of a ramp, Place the tape measure in the center of the curb ramp, perpendicular to the running slope. Record the width to the nearest half inch. The width of the turning space is usually the same as the width of the ramp it serves. However, you should verify the width with a tape measure. 
to measure the length of the turning space, place the tape measure parallel to the running slope of the ramp. If the curb ramp has flared wings, you must record the slope for each flare. When measuring the slope for each flare, place the level along the curb line. Clear space is required for any curb that is on the diagonal or apex of the corner, regardless of type. Measure clear space length by running a tape measure from the flow line out to the vehicle travel lane on both the left side and the right side of the clear space. Then record the shortest measurement of the two. The width of the clear space should be the same as the width of the curb ramp. You should always confirm the width with a tape measure. Blended transitions are measured differently from other types of curb ramps. You need to take each set of measurements twice, once in relation to the crossing for the first street and again for the secondary street. First, position yourself facing the first street, in line with the center of the pedestrian crossing. To measure the running slope, place the level over the detectable warnings and below the grade break. Point towards the sidewalk or a pedestrian access route. To measure cross slope, move up to the pedestrian access route or sidewalk and place your level in the center of the sidewalk above the grade break. Again, stay in line with the center of the pedestrian crossing. To measure the width of the ramp, stay in the same spot above the grade break, centered on the pedestrian crossing and perpendicular to the running slope. To measure the counter slope, keep the level in the center of the pedestrian crossing but move it down to the flow line and place it on the curb and the gutter. Now you can repeat the process for the secondary street. Face the secondary route or street, position yourself in line with that pedestrian crossing and measure the running slope, counter slope, cross slope, and width. To measure the street grade, place your level on the street in the center of the pedestrian crossing. Your level should be just above the curb and gutter, and perpendicular to the running slope of the curb ramp.
ODOT has created a stop points process to evaluate the compliance of a curb ramp during construction. These can be found on our ADA Design Resource website. Stop points are points in the construction sequence where construction should pause so that the ramp can be evaluated to make sure it complies with safety guidelines. Field personnel should use ODOT's curb ramp evaluation form to inspect and review curb ramps and other ADA facilities. Some locations have constraints that may prevent you from designing and constructing a fully compliant curb ramp. For instance, there may be right-of-way constraints where it is not feasible to buy the necessary right-of-way. In this case, you should build the curb ramp as close to the standard requirements as possible. The ramp should be identified as non-standard in the collector app, and you will need an approved waiver. Refer to our video, ADA Compliant Curb Ramps, the waiver process, for more details.